Hi everyone, my name is Laura DeGrange and I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Opportunity International. I wanted to let you know we are just about ready for takeoff to our virtual insight trip to Uganda. We are about to go on a journey of a lifetime together as we meet three of Opportunity's clients and enter into their stories of challenge, triumph, and transformation. Now, as you settle in, please say hello in the chat to other travelers. And if you have kiddos in your house, scroll down to where it says family fun and you can download coloring pages to help them enjoy the trip with you as well. Now, if at any point during our trip, you're moved to make a donation, you can go to opportunity.org slash VIT donate. But for now, get comfortable, turn the volume up and enjoy the ride. It's my honor to present you with Passport to Opportunity, Uganda. Everyone's lives are filled with setbacks and successes, challenges and changes. But when you're born into a life of poverty, your journey begins as a constant struggle. You may sleep on a mat, not on a mattress. You may eat nothing and walk miles to drink water that will make you sick. Life is this way for close to 700 million people who live on less than $1.90 a day. For almost 25 years, we had been making incredible progress to reduce extreme poverty in the world. But in 2020, the COVID crisis pushed 100 million people back into the deepest poverty that exists. For the rest of us who must only imagine living conditions like this, it's our responsibility to make sure they have an opportunity to break free from poverty once and for all. I am Alice Lajoa. I work for Opportunity International in Uganda. My country is a place filled with welcoming people and breathtaking landscapes. But my people face a challenge. Currently, 41% of people here live in poverty and almost half our population is under the age of 15. This is one of the youngest population in the world and they are facing a future filled with devastating challenges if we do nothing to step in. This work is not easy. Reaching these people many times in remote villages is complicated. Listening to their needs and designing what works for them, it takes time, but we know that an opportunity can change a life forever. I've seen it happen countless times with my own eyes. Now, I want you to see it too. Farmers like Elijah are the backbone of the African economy. Three out of four people live in rural areas and work in the agriculture industry. It's estimated that these farmers produce only about a quarter of their potential harvests. That's not enough to feed their families, and it will never be enough to meet the global food needs in the next 20 years. I was able to get the opportunity 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 Ebirimeng Atenga 
ngama somero gari wala ate ngari ni serious school fees ezo somero kunya ambako okubateka mu bisuro champaliriza okwata gana ne no mutandisi we somero elimo ne tukanya omuwala wanga soka ni muteka yongo mu kisuro nageza ko okanya ne director nanzi kiriza ebisere ebyo nga nsobola okulima bwe nkungu rakasori nga muwansawo nga bigenda ku school fees ni ntambula mu bulamu obwo so wakatao embera tadi nyango Opportunities Agriculture Finance Program is here to help farmers meet their potential, feed their families and provide for their communities. In short, we want them to grow more and get more. We are focused on two things. First, we provide training and support so they learn best practices and can get the best prices for their harvests. Next, we provide the capital that farmers need to buy things like tools, seeds and fertilizers to improve their crops. Loni yanga ya soka mpotunite najifu na mbili kumi na gumu. Tukwafu na moku wangurua e nkoze saa ya sent ni nkoze saa ya roni ni tufuna training wange mwanyi na jira wange sobora ku kunsitura ni nsobora okutandi kukutambula mumurembe Orusi kubye mfuna nga nsura kufuna mo akasura kuyamba tefuna kusomoze ngo kwa manyi ngebirala sente mitwalo makumi ya biri byanyamba ko mukugure ndokwa tigo ezisoka mukusimbe manyi nenga target kwali kutuka kuchirubirwe cyo kurima manyi nga nsobora kuva mu mbere eza season Champa liri zalone yokubiri, jenafuna mobili kuminabiri, ya mituara tano. Ya nyamba ko, oku expanding, oku gazia, eni miro. Nenso wuro kufa ku half acre, nentamburo kutuka kumuanyi, eziwe la acre, nyane chitundu. Zewe natandika, muriko dizi. Natandika nganso wuro ngangkungura, and so is Bish Zemwani. Chikumin Kaga. No Rua Lelo, or going to Kachuka, name is Somo. Being so was a so to Kakungo and so Makumiavi. Our Katiwabi and Nasat. So over Ramu, Gina Tambuli Ramu, Nga, Ngezako, Okwejamu, Mumbera, Ezokurima, Bijanja, Bomonde, Kasori, Ngende Kuchubi, which I'm getting Sovira. Chocolima, a chocolima, a mine. A cutting pudding of Runge, Kuanga, a binyamba, or covering our lee, wavy. Sovaku, Kuanga de Mukakamu, Namanian to season with Tandika, Nengenda ku nyumba je na kata je ndi mukuzimba ane yangu kote chenga gua nenge chifarini chira banga wali uchichuse eno yari nengi jize zimba o eno nengi jize vyuma ah when zimbi amakama rara enchoka choka kuiri kuanga wali wo amadirisa eri teri na madirisa nenge chifarini iwe chiri yeso. To date, we've mobilized $264 million in capital for farmers, and we are just getting started. We are training farmers to become leaders in their communities called farmer support agents, who bring opportunity services to their neighbors so that entire communities can transform together. Elijah is one of these farmer support agents. a farmer support agent. Echigende rugo chafu, kwe kura banga bari mwa fe, baga niruwa, neva funo wakungu, kwe chote ni nchiba kora. Ah, orugano luange, 
mu bwa pharma support agent funishing international yankoze sa mukuru mukumpa tools obe bikoze sebwa nge simu a fili chats obwa chats zezo kusomesa za kwa balimi tusikiriza omulimi buli mwezi okutule uwe ni tulambura musirigwe ni tulaba atambu datya kubyamaka abana basomye batya nemere ya wakajalia agitege satya ekyo kisoboze seza group ya fe group za fe okurabanga okurabanga zisobora buli omo kuteka mu nkora ekyo kirubirirwa kutuka ko nga tuli commission iyo mulimi omu wafe okurabanga tutuka ku kukungura kirongo mitano puranga mbye mbye nyumirizamu kubanga abali bibansa mekitibwa ngo mukurembeze ate ngo muwabuzi kubanga bwo boli yao ikiganye mu nimiro ajya nakwebuza ko no mu guiding cyane nokora ekisinga nyo cyenyize ate kinganye cyenganyirwa mu mu byo opportunity a uh, che twitter final chapters owe nkoze sa ya sent chinyambye okuraba ngamba ku mutendera ngangenda ku mutendera murara okufuna obuwereza ku mobile banking saving obo kutereka a uh, ne mfuna mu eh enkoze sa ya saving mu opportunity mu opportunity bank opo mu opportunity chinyambye ko okufuna ingirigenzo ro kurabirira abana wakati abana bange bona basubira mu kusoma sobodo kufuna school fees ezo sobodo kusomesa omwana ku mutosa ku university n'uko tukati ni nayo mwana wensubira mu gomwenda ajye kubanga amaliriza mwaka ogukusatu nenga ebyo byona mbije muki mu opportunity Nearly every client of ours had the same primary goal to give their children a better life than they have. And they know that education is the key to making that happen. In the communities where we work, often public schools are overcrowded. Rural areas are particularly challenging, where schools are often too far away, requiring children to travel. Opportunities Education Finance Program has a simple goal get more children into better schools. We do that by providing financing and training for affordable private schools, which are filling these gaps and making it possible for students from low-income families to get a good education at a school close to them. We all know that the role of providing education to the citizens of a given state or country is the role of the government. But you realize that sometimes government becomes overstrained, especially looking at the young population of Uganda, which is growing. Averagely, our population is 17 years. That means out of the 45 million Ugandans, 75% are at youth age or young age that need education most. And you realize that uh, the public schools or the government schools are few and they cannot provide the services to the, the local citizens. So the private players come in. The first challenge, automatically, it is the poverty among their parents. So people have not been having any foods in the garden and they saw children have been sleeping empty stomach without eating and so they come to school even when they have not eaten others even have resorted to stealing you hear a mother was imprisoned because of stealing someone's food from the garden we started Hitton junior school in 2007 he saw that this community wanted a good school which would be able to support the community we began with around 15 borders. 
Then after the second term, they added us other children. Actually, I first stayed with those three in my room. And I was their matron, their cook, everything. Then later on, after acquiring a loan of opportunity, we had to build and even plaster and paint our first building. Then we had to construct this one you see here behind. That was a dome tree. We were small, but now we are big. We have a total of 1,034 one pupils in our school. Our mission is to provide affordable education in a conducive learning environment. The school fees which is charged here for this school ranges from 100,000 to 300. But when you go to a school within Kampala Metropolitan, they will be charging 1.5 million Ugandan shillings as school fees. It's the reason why we exist and we associate with low-cost private schools. But we emphasize that they provide quality education. Remember, the government does not support them. So it is now the uh, non-governmental organizations like Opportunity International that comes in to support so that they provide quality education and they increase access to education for the local communities. We do support these private low-cost schools in various ways. One of the ways is one, we train and build capacity of the school leaders, especially the school proprietors, on how to manage their schools effectively. And then secondly, we also do train the teachers through teacher mentor program. We are the foot soldiers on ground. That's why we work closely every day with the schools and whatever needs they have or challenges they have, we should be ready to support them. Me as a director, I've acquired a lot and even it is more than even the loans they give me because it has learned me how to manage the school. When I talk about Joyce, I feel like I'm talking about my mother. I can call at night and she always speaks me and maybe answers my questions. Joyce is a lady who sacrifices her time. We are always supporting, updating the schools because during COVID period, there was a lot of misinformation. And COVID came with a lot of stress, trauma. Teachers were stressed. Some teachers were vending in order to survive. The learners were stressed. Others, some learners became laborers, selling things in order to provide a meal during lockdown. Bringing everybody back into classroom was a challenge. So they put that as their priority. They make a decision and looking at the needs of the learners. The learners have priority in whatever they are doing. In January, when I visited this school, uh, they had uh, a challenge of uh, water source. So there is now a permanent source of water for this school. They went for school improvement loan. And when they got the loan, they have drilled, they called it a borehole in the local uh, dialect. We had to install in because at first children would take water from the tap, but now we had to buy the equipment for that distilled clean water. And so we put it there. Now our children do get clean water. We are no longer suffering with water. We constructed girls' toilets which use water. It has improved the school day by day. So we guide them and we closely support them on how best to utilize the loans. And alongside, the learner who is the last beneficiary of this loan must be able to excel. Because all that we do at school level, we are looking at that child. 
we want that child to be transformed and achieve his or her dreams. Our target is that learner. There is nothing I will do if I have not transformed that learner to become a useful or a prosperous child in future. I want to become a professional art surgeon. My uncle is a doctor. He tells me that many people are dying of heart failure. So I want to help them. I want to become a gynecologist because many mothers die while giving birth because of the medical services. I want to change that. I want to help them. It has improved our village. It has employed very many people and it has changed their lives. Since the program began a decade ago, we've reached 10 million children with these services. Loans help school owners build new classrooms and add more seats so that more students can attend. Training for school leaders and teachers focuses on the quality of the education that children are receiving. And we help schools form clusters so leaders and teachers can learn best practices from their peers who understand the challenges better than anyone else. Serving schools like this one enables us to reach young children. But what happens to those who slip through and don't get a good education? Here, we find a lot of youth who are farming because they have no other options, but they have different dreams. What they lack is the basic knowledge on how to save money and plan for the future. And more than anything, they lack a supportive community who will help them to achieve their dreams. Thank you. VSLA is actually a village savings and loan association. So they form them in the communities. These members actually save for a year. Each member has to save. And they have shares ranging from 2,000 Uganda shillings to 5,000, depending on the, the capacity of the member. So if they keep saving on a weekly basis in a month, they're able to earn good income. And this money is shared at the end of the year with interest. The banks actually look at the youth as a risky intervention. First of all, they don't have the collateral, they don't, they're not credit worth, uh, they don't have the skill to maybe manage a business. So you find that so many banks are scared of financing these youth because maybe their loans might go bad and maybe they don't have even the money to save in the bank. So we actually targeting the rural, the rural youth. Those are the young women and men in communities that, that are marginalized, unable to access finances. I was a leader and I was also a treasurer. I was collecting money after recording the money in the book. We put the money in the box and keep them inside the house. So I had fear. I had fear that people's money can be taken by thieves. There was seven millions in the box. Even I was fearing even to go behind the house because I thought some, somebody can come and take the box. I was not taking this to others. <laughs> it was two years. The first time I approached uh, Janet, you know, she was even scared of going into the bank. Uh, actually, there was this mindset that uh, banks are for the rich. You know, for us low-income earners, we don't go to the bank. But she's able to approach the bank. She's able to, uh, you know, come and do the transactions from the bank. There's no fear anymore because the banks are there. They're able to go and access the money. They're able to save and they earn interest at a lower the charges. From my primary level, I was admiring the teachers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because I was seeing them with life. <laughs> it was my dream to be a teacher. And it was my dream to get a school of my own. You know, when you don't believe in yourself, you won't do anything. 
So before we even encourage them to do what we do, what to attend all these trainings, we tell them to believe in themselves. Because so many opportunities are around. For example, Janet, you know, she believed in herself. She has a talent. She, has, uh, she, go, she went through a training of, uh, of being a teacher. But she, was, uh, she didn't have a school. She thought about going to the urban area maybe to teach from a certain school. But through the trainings we gave them, she was able to scan around her community. She found that there was no school nearby. Children, we are suffering because the schools, most of the schools are very far from here. That's why we, we, we decided to construct a nursery school. I knew how to teach children. I had limited capital to construct permanent buildings. They taught us um, lessons like how can we use things in the environment and we make businesses. I looked around and I, I got timbers and trees and I constructed uh, that, that structure. I want my children to be very important people in the world. Uh, I want them to study such that they can come out good people in the community. I want them to get jobs like nurses, doctors, even teachers, because I also <laughs> a teacher, I'm also a teacher. <laughs> With starting a school, she's now earning and she's also supporting the community around. She's a role model now among her community. And a stick. Everything is possible when you have practiced it. But before practicing it, you see it as a big thing, as an impossible. But when you put it in your mind that I can do this, Yes, you can do it. The most vulnerable people in the world face so many hardships. No food on the table, no good schools in the neighborhood, and no opportunities to build the lives they dream of. But despite the many challenges they face, our clients, like the Ugandans you've met today, are courageous, resilient, and joyful people. Opportunity is going where no one else will go to serve the farmers, the children, the young entrepreneurs who are working hard to break the cycle of poverty and provide a better future for themselves, their families and their communities. We stand together as way makers in this journey. Will you stand with us? I am Iskodioi Masi and I am a way maker. I'm Damai and I'm a way maker. I'm how are you? I'm a way maker. It's Najoko Janet and I am a way maker. <laughs>
Now, I hope you were inspired by their stories, the stories of the impact that you are making possible, because I want to ask you to consider something big. Would you consider making this your biggest year of giving to Opportunity yet? Or even maybe your biggest year of giving to any charitable organization ever to help us in our efforts to end extreme poverty? Thank you so much to everyone for traveling with us today. I can't wait to see what your journey with Opportunity is going to look like.